Up next, a movie that can't seem to decide what it wants to be. Hello and welcome to Rotted Review of the Day, and today I am taking a look at the 2018 movie Killer Kate. Uh, This was a low-budget, small production that I kind of picked on a whim, and what I found is it is a fun little ride that wound up not having a whole lot going for it in terms of believability or much of a point of existing. Uh, But to get into more detail than that, we're going to have to get into the categories. As always, four different categories, each one worth up to 25 points for a total possible score of 100 points. So the plot of this one, I gave an 8 out of 25. This followed the character of Kate, uh, who is estranged from her sister Angie. And Angie is getting married tomorrow and is having her bachelorette party and wants Kate involved. She wants her sister to come back into her life and join her for a bachelorette party and a wedding along with Angie's two friends. And uh, so they get a and b kind of place, uh, the movie's version of Airbnb, and uh, they wind up getting assaulted in a home invasion kind of way. Uh, this movie differs from a lot of home invasion uh, style movies in a number of ways. Uh, principally, you get to see the attacker's viewpoint of things in the planning stages, um, in the behind the scenes stuff. And the movie attempts to stride that line between horror and comedy, uh, and drama, uh, by having the villains be a bit of uh, a bumbling mess, a uh, bickering family that doesn't quite know their heads from their tails and uh, it has a lot of infighting and, uh, you know, to some comic relief. But uh, it, it's definitely not a terror inducing suspenseful uh, tour de force of a home invasion movie. The levity prevents that from happening. Um, So you get to see both sides of it, both from uh, Kate and Angie and her friend's point of view, uh, as well as from the attacker's point of view. Um, But uh, by uh, attempting to have that uh, jackassery level of the villains, uh, it wound up uh, not really knowing what it wanted to be. Uh, is it a comedy? Is it a horror movie? Is it a comedy that has a lot of blood and gore in it? Is it a horror movie that has some levity in it? Um, and, uh, that's a really tricky, tricky thing to pull off. And what I found more often than not is the best way to handle it, uh, outside of what winds up being kind of cult classics, which you really just cannot, purposefully replicate that has to be an organic natural thing but if you're going to be making a movie that is a blend of comedy and horror i think you really have to treat both sides with reverence um one of the best examples i can think of is uh, cabin in the woods was a great example of when you had the horrific elements they were deadly serious and then you had them cutting to the men behind the scenes and there was some levity involved two very different tones and they didn't bleed together a whole lot uh, another good example of this uh tucker and dale versus evil when you had uh tucker and dale's point of view of things it's a light-hearted romp of two buddies going and having some fun fishing in a cabin they just bought when you have the teenagers or the college kids point of view it's sinister redneck uh revenge movie and the tones between the two, each one were distinct and each one was treated with reverence. And in this case, um, everything was really kind of dealt with on the same amateurish level. And there was a lot of bleed through of tone that really didn't, it it made the movie seem confused. So from a written plot standpoint, uh, character development, dialogue, all of that, I gave it an eight out of 25. Um, Another element of this from a plot standpoint that I really didn't care for necessarily, uh, it just seems like a bizarre choice, is this is an hour and 20 minute long movie. It's not terribly long. And the first act of violence for home invasion happenings was 43 minutes into the movie, over halfway through. And granted, one of the best parts of this movie, I thought, was having actually some decent character development. For being a low-budget movie, this had 
mostly believable characters. Um, you know, I mean, some lightheartedness. And, you know, when you had Angie and Kate, I actually thought that the dialogue and the acting and so forth was good. So the written stuff there was good. But for a home invasion movie to happen over halfway through the movie being over, and then it seemed like it happened relatively fast, it, it, it just seemed like an odd pacing choice to me. But moving on to the intent, I gave that 6 out of 25, which really shouldn't be too much of a shock considering what I've said so far. Um, having a comedy and a horror uh, mix, it's definitely not a bad thing, but it's got to be treated with very delicate hands. And uh, one thing that this movie did that I find a lot of comedy horror combos that don't work also do is this had an element of playing to the audience, which... I really think that's something that should be avoided, if at all uh, possible. The comedy has to traditionally come from a place of juxtaposition between a, a moment of levity and the horrific elements that are happening in contrast to it. Um, to have it uh, where the, the, the characters are kind of almost in on the joke, uh, it does one or the other a disservice, usually both. But the one thing that I can say I, done, I did like about this movie is the levity that it did instill, I actually found myself fairly on board with. I thought it was cute. Uh, it actually, despite myself, had me laughing, genuinely laughing, not at uh, the absurdity, but l genuinely laughing at the comedy of it. Uh, in one or two parts. So, uh, from a comedic standpoint, I think this movie worked. So, I mean, if, if they were trying to have a comedy with some gruesome elements, maybe it, uh, you know, deserved a little better. But regardless, what I think they were trying to accomplish and what I think they actually wound up accomplishing, 6 out of 25 on the intent. Uh, the acting, I gave a 13 out of 25. This was one of the better parts of the movie. And that's not to say that this had great acting in it, but the performances were fairly believable for being low budget, for being a bit amateurish. Um, and, you know, recognizing that, and usually the pitfalls of that are with the, with the acting. Um, especially with dialogue. When you have two characters talking to each other, a lot of times, and I've said this in previous reviews, uh, you have characters, or you have actors that are memorizing and reciting lines as opposed to characters talking with one another. And it's very, uh, it's, it's a very subtle but very distinct difference. And in this case, this felt very natural. It felt like characters talking to each other. So hats off to them on that one. Uh, Alexandra Feld as Kate, I thought, did a pretty good job. Uh, but I think the real standout for me was Grant Lyon as Jimmy, one of the home invaders. His character in this one provided that level of uh, comedic levity that I thought worked on a comedic level, not on a uh, horror level in the slightest. But he was the one that had me laughing more often than anybody else. Um, which, which feels weird for me to be saying since... The only thing that I really review is horror movies, so giving points to an actor for making me laugh. Regardless, I think that was kind of the point of his character, and he did, so hats off to him for that one. The technical, I gave a 10 out of 25. Um, this did have a bit of an amateurish feel to it. Despite that, it really actually didn't look too bad. Uh, camera work and effects and editing were pretty passable and adept. Nothing mind-blowing, nothing that I would even say is uh, above average, but it was not terrible and by all rights it really should have been terrible and it, it, it actually managed to rise above that uh more than anything else this movie was very uh unoriginal and i think that was one of the worst parts about it um you had characters that had a baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire that had a female's name attached to it uh you you had a you know a, a scene that although it made me laugh was right out of ferris bueller's day off uh, there were elements of this that just were uh, movie fans making a movie more than artists wanting to tell a story. And that's ultimately, I think, one of its biggest failings, but still made it a fun watch in its own way. That's about the best way I can really describe it. So that gives it a total of 37 out of 100 points. Would I recommend this one? I would have to say... Probably not. Uh, I, you know, I, this is, I feel I'm, I'm in a weird position. I wanted to like it more than I wound up apparently doing. I saw this had a 3.6 uh, out of 10 on IMDb. 
And even after having watched it, I'm like, oh, it should be a little higher than that at least. But tallying up my scores, that's 37 out of 100. That's pretty much 3.7 out of 10. I'm right in line with it, and I'm a little befuddled about it. So I, I, I enjoyed it more than I hated it, but at the same time, I also found it a bit pointless. That's about the best I can really say as far as my recommendation of it goes. <laughs> if you want a fun time that is completely pointless, then Killer Kate, you could do a lot worse than. So that should about do it for my review. Thank you very much for joining me here today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.